anybody else dealing with a sick kiddo at home? It feels never ending this time of year. Whether it's their first illness or their 20th, it's never fun when your child is sick. As a parent, it can also be hard to decide if you can let your child write out the illness at home or if a visit to their clinician is necessary. Today, we'll discuss the five things to monitor when your child is sick and signs that you need to bring them in to be evaluated. Hi, I am Dr. Mona, a pediatrician and mom. I help empower parents with easy to understand, evidence-based information so you can make the best choices for your children. Make sure to like this video and subscribe here to Peds Doc Talk TV to stay up to date on all of the latest videos and content we have coming out. Okay, so what are the five things to monitor when your child is sick? This list doesn't encompass every nuance, so remember that. These are those big picture things when your child is sick at home with say viral symptoms. More videos to come here on Peds.talk TV on more specific conditions and what to monitor in terms of nuance. These are five things to monitor as they may signify for their workup or intervention that may be needed, such as medications, fluids, lab work, or imaging. And trust me, you want to stick through the end of this video, especially to see some very important videos if you ever find your child having difficulty breathing or are not sure what that may look like. Dehydration happens when you lose more fluid than you're taking in. This can happen from losing too much fluid from vomiting, diarrhea, or fever. Fevers cause your metabolism to rise and your breathing rate is going to increase, resulting in you breathing out extra moisture and also sweating it out. Things like stomach bugs can cause repetitive diarrhea or vomiting, putting kids at high risk for dehydration. You can also become dehydrated due to decreased fluid intake. Many kids don't drink as much when they are sick due to the fatigue or due to a sore throat or just overall not feeling well. Therefore, it's important to encourage fluid intake when a child is sick. For more info on stomach bugs and how to manage them, check out my YouTube video. A moderately dehydrated child will be urinating less frequently, for infants, this is less than four wet diapers a day. They may also have a parched, dry mouth and make fewer tears when crying. For infants and toddlers whose soft spot, which is right here, is still open, you may feel it sunken in. A severely dehydrated child will look much sicker and would have more reduced urine combined with low fluid intake. They're very fussy, they're excessively sleepy, and their eyes can look sunken in. If you are concerned your child is dehydrated, we want to see them or know about it via phone call so we can let you know how best to proceed. The second important thing to monitor is a child's breathing. As I mentioned, kids with a fever will breathe faster than they normally would. We would expect the rate of breathing to slow and return to normal when the fever comes down. When monitoring breathing, it's important to not only monitor their rate of breathing, so that's the speed, but also their work of breathing. I'm about to show you some really important videos of children who are having that work of breathing or difficulty breathing and describe what it will look like. Signs that your child is having difficulty breathing can present in many ways. In this video, we can see the child having intercostal or between the rib retractions where the muscles are pulling into the ribs quickly. In this video, you can see suprasternal retractions where the chest wall is tugging above the sternum or above the collarbone. In this video, you can see both those intercostal retractions in the ribs and the suprasternal retractions. And in this video, you can see everything the ribs tugging in and out, the suprasternal area tugging in and out. And if you look closely, the nostrils flaring in and out as well. In this video, take a look at the head. You can see the head is bobbing back and forth in a rhythmic way. Other signs of difficulty breathing can include grunting sounds, or if they are speaking, they would have trouble getting those words out. I, I can't, 
their skin around their lips or face are turning blue, or they are wheezing, which usually sounds like a high-pitched whistling sound with each breath. If you notice any of these signs that your child is working harder to breathe, it's important to take them to a clinician to evaluate. The next thing we're going to talk about is fever trends. All infants less than three months of age need to be evaluated for any fever above 100.4 due to their age and developing immune system. For older infants and children, fever can often be managed at home. For more in-depth information on fevers and when to worry or when to treat them with medication, check out my YouTube video on Fevers 101. Overall, when we're looking at a sick child, we are looking at fever persistence or irritability with fever that is unable to be managed. You're going to want to watch to the end of this video for that information. If your child has persistent fever for more than five days, we would love to do a once over to make sure all is okay. Many viruses can cause fever persistence sometimes for seven to 10 days. Yes, I know it sounds like a long time, but it happens. But an assessment would ensure that there's no need for any antibiotic at that five day mark or any other workup. If your child has a fever for five days or less and is not breathing well, super uncomfortable, or dehydrated, you're going to want to bring them in. Don't wait the five days. We're looking at the big picture here when they're sick. How are they acting? Are they getting worse as the days go by? Are their fevers spiking higher? Are they looking more miserable with those fevers? Are normal cuddles or using pain fever reducing meds just not cutting it anymore to keep them consolable? These are all reasons to get them evaluated. Now, many viral illnesses can cause a rash. I could do an entire two hour video on viral rashes in children and there would still be so much to unpack. Typically, a viral related rash is light pink and blanchable, which means that when you push down on the skin, the pink will disappear with pressure and then return when you let go. These rashes also are called viral exanthems and they do not typically cause discomfort or bother a child. It's just visually looking bothersome to you. If a rash is bothersome to the child, like they're digging or scratching into their skin, or the rash starts to rapidly spread in the setting of a fever, it's a good idea to see your clinician. It still may be viral in nature or otherwise benign, but we would want to assess your child to confirm what the rash is. Also, if a rash ever appears atypical to you or just worries you, remember it's never wrong to have it evaluated. Rashes are actually really common in children, especially when they get viruses, and they can have many causes, but it may be hard for you to figure out at home what it is. If a visit to your clinician will bring you peace of mind, that in itself is a reason enough to go. This is very important to me. Your kid just looks off. Kids will not be at baseline when sick, and we all know that. You know, they're not gonna be eating at baseline, their behavior will be off, maybe their sleep and their activity. But you should see moments of interaction at their developmental level. They should be breathing comfortably, they should be hydrated, and they should be able to be comforted and not completely inconsolable for hours on end. Monitor how your child is overall feeling. And I know this can seem hard, but you will learn to understand what their norm is. If they have a fever and they're happy and playful, this is wonderful. But if that fever persists more than five days, a checkup can help just make sure it's all looking viral. But if they have a fever and are just miserable, medicate with ibuprofen or acetaminophen. If they don't perk up or are dehydrated or having difficulty breathing, get them evaluated. Now, if they don't have a fever, but they just seem to be in pain, such as their ears are hurting and they're maybe putting their hand on their ear or pointing to their ear, and you have given them ibuprofen or acetaminophen for pain relief, or their belly is hurting and it's unrelenting, or they're just not playful or active and just seem off despite a normal routine, or they're just irritable and your gut is telling you something is wrong, get them seen. Even if we can offer reassurance and things to monitor, that can be hugely helpful. 
That persistent irritability where you just can't get a child to calm down or be consoled, or they have true listlessness, where they are hard to arouse or don't interact with you at their normal baseline, can be a sign of a more moderate to severe illness that may need workup. Unfortunately, on these videos, I can't diagnose and say what all the possibilities are when your child is sick because I'm not evaluating your child. But I can tell you from my experience that a child who is dehydrated, a child who is having difficulty breathing, a child with an uncomfortable spreading rash, or a kid who is just plain miserable or is in pain in some part of their body and nothing is helping them, is a kid I want to see. Even if it's to offer a reassurance and a plan, it can help everyone feel better. Okay, there you have it. Hopefully, these tips on what to monitor when your child is sick will give you some things to look out for when you find yourself sick at home with your kiddo, and I hope it's not anytime soon, but I know it's a reality. If you found this information helpful, please like and share this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel to be the first to know about new videos published. And comment below if you have any questions. I'll see you all next week for another video here on Pete's Doc Talk TV. Stay well.